Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this episode of Audacious Confidence on Germaniac TV. I am your host, Alicia Khoury here. And as you can see, my positioning is a little different tonight because I got a really, 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 really special show. Um, my guests are actually here with me tonight. Um, they're not going to be um, on another screen. They're actually going to be sitting here with me. So that's exciting. And they're two of my favorite people in the world. I have a, a, a few of those, but two of my favorite people in the world uh, joining me. But before I get to that, I'm just going to let you know what our topic is for tonight. Because, you know, we talk about confidence here. Um, ah, ha, ha. Funny, funny, funny. I don't know. It's season four, episode six, I guess, or seven. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's episode six. Um, and it's that's monumental. It's halfway through the season. So it's a great, great time to have them on the show tonight. But uh, tonight's topic is about confidence of course, because it is the Audacious Confidence Show. And I don't remember if I introduced myself, but I'm Alicia Puri, your host. And I am the Red Carpet CEO here to influence, educate, inspire, and entertain you tonight. And we're really tackling, in the last few episodes, we're tackling what's been going on with the protests, what's been going on in America right now, and around the globe, actually, uh, the ba Black Lives Matter movement and uh, the last two uh, episodes I've had, you know, men talking about their experiences being a black man in America. And today I'm talking about being mixed in America because there was, when I, when I created the post for this, I talked about there being the one drop rule and the one drop rule was stating that um, if you had just a single drop of blood that is black, a single African you know, a drop of African blood in your veins, you were considered black. And that was during um, segregation times to, to really identify who were, who were black and who weren't. And even though that was never, that never became part of the law, it still kind of infiltrated this, the fabric of this society really feeling like um, making us feel inferior. I'm sorry, my son just walked in the room too. It's crazy being in here. <laughs> uh, uh, this, this idea of being inferior. And so children that were mixed had this, also had this, this feeling of inferiority growing up as well, because they weren't, they, they just didn't really have an identity. It's like, where are you? Very special episode with your granddaughters. Yes. <laughs> it's like, where are you? Who, where do you fit? You're not exactly um, this race or that race. And, and how do people look at you and classify you just by looking at you? So I wanted to dive into that with two very special people, people that I know very well. I've known them since before they were born. They were actually, um, they were my roommates. <laughs> they, they were <laughs> inside of me. So I knew them since conception. Um, I, I'm going to have them on the show. So I'm going to introduce each one of them. I don't know if my son is probably going to join us just to say hi, but uh, tonight is all about my girls because this is the first time they're actually coming on camera with me. I don't know if I can stand it. I don't know if I can stand it because they have not consented to being in any show with me before until this moment. <laughs> and, I, and they may walk out of the room as we speak because they're like freaking out. I embarrass them so much. So uh, I was the room and they were my roommates. Yeah, they were my roommates, room, W-O-M. They were my tenants for 36 weeks, 35 and a half for the other one. So let me introduce each one of them to you. Uh, my oldest, my firstborn, who will be sitting on this side of me when she gets here, is Cassandra Curry. She is 22 years old. She goes, she's a senior uh, at University of Miami. This is her final year of college. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Who knows? She might be moving on to bigger and better things <clears throat> and continuing her studies. But right now she's a senior at the University of Miami and who will be sitting on the other side of me is my 17 year old daughter who's a senior in high school brooke curry and come on ladies and they are um two of my uh, 
if she doesn't get accolades. <laughs> yes, my beautiful Brooke, who is so uh, intelligent and talented and creative, and Cassandra is also talented and creative and beautiful. <laughs> and what can I say? These are my girls, and they didn't run away. They actually stayed to sit next to me on the show. So, oh, and here comes here comes the other one. He's kind of looking crazy right now, but just just lean over. This, you guys already know Elijah. Hi. So this is Elijah, <laughs> and he's going back to play. I don't no. know. You're gonna hang a little bit. He's hang. He's gonna hang a little bit. Okay, but you're not gonna be on camera because we didn't really expect you to be here. So now we're all squished together. Okay, let me sit this way. So uh, <laughs> we got a little extra. We got a little extra blessing for a little bit. So I wanted to open up this topic. The first a segment of the show. I wanted to talk a little bit about. Um, childhood, being mixed, being uh, a child growing up. Like, I'm going to start with Cassandra and ask, when did you notice, like in high school, middle school, when did you notice that you were black? Really? <laughs> That's Yeah. Um, it's really interesting because, of course, in elementary school, you don't really see color. Um, you just know the people <laughs> that you grow up with um, as your friends and everything. Your classmates are practically your second family, and you don't really notice the differences. But once you get to middle school, um, we went to middle school in an area that had a lot more white people and <laughs> different colors than when we were in middle school. So and we did elementary, right? I mean, elementary. elementary school. So <clears throat> we didn't really um, see a difference until we got there. Um, for me personally, um, I was in the gifted program and at the time the school kind of broke up the grades. So the <laughs> um, gifted kids were all in the same group and then each grade level had their own other groups. And so I was in the gifted group and the gifted group was majority. A majority of white people and it was kind of strange being there um being a colored person in there because there weren't a lot of us but then people would also call us oreos and say you know you're not really black like you hang out with all the white kids and you know like you're in those classes with all the white kids so you're not actually a black person um and then i also didn't listen to a lot of secular music in middle school so i wasn't into a lot of like rap and hip hop and a ton of stuff that all the other kids were listening to. Um, sometimes I'd have some of the um, other gifted students come up to me like, oh, you don't listen to Jay-Z? And I was like, no, I don't really <laughs> listen to the secular music at all. And they were just like, oh, I'm blacker than you, you know, like that kind of thing. And then of course, when I got- And you played school, the violin too. Yeah, played the and violin. you played violin. I'm like, I wasn't on. on any sports team. You didn't play sports? So I was very, <laughs> I was violin. very nerdy. <laughs> I mean, being told that I wasn't black enough, it didn't offend me as much as it should have because I didn't see... You didn't really understand what that meant. Yeah, like I didn't consider the color of my skin to be uh, an identity definer for me. Um, I just thought, you know, like, oh, I get straight A's, like I'm on honor roll all the time. I play the violin, like a lot of you guys can't do that. So it was really <laughs> um, <laughs> kind of just a... <laughs> You know, I know who I am and that doesn't necessarily affect me. But then getting into high school, um, that started to become a little more of my identity and it started to affect me a little more because in those gifted classes, I was the only black person in those classes and it would kind of upset me. But I didn't really know why you were fix upset that. or how to. Yeah. You know, like I was just like, it's just a thing. Like there's nothing I can really do about it. So you can't just, do anything about being black. Yeah, like I was like, I'm not going <laughs> to complain about it. Like I'll just make sure that I do the best I can do. <laughs> right. And how about you, Brooke? Okay. <clears throat> so my story, is, <laughs> thank you. Um, my story is pretty similar to Cassie's. Because um, you played the violin too. I did play the violin. <laughs> uh, no, but like in elementary school, my gifted class, we were predominantly black and for those of us who weren't black i mean we were we were mixed and it was fine like nobody saw it as anything different uh, we were all just friends so then finally when i made it to middle school um i noticed that well the percentage of black people decreased significantly and there were a lot more white kids in the class and i have to say that there was a definer 
um, a defining moment for me when I realized like, oh, my color, the color of my skin does like have an effect on the way people see me was when um, I, I used to wear my hair in cornrows all the time. We're gonna and, come to hair in a second. Yeah, we are gonna yes. talk about hair in a second. <laughs> yeah. But I used I used to wear my hair in cornrows all the time, and I hadn't um, in sixth grade yet. So the first time that I showed up to school, one of my new friends who was white, he said, "Oh, you have your hair in cornrows." Like that's that's a that's like you look black. Like you look like a black girl. And I was just like, okay. Um. What am, am I, I supposed not, to right? look like? Yeah. <laughs> I've but I've never heard this story. <laughs> oh, you weren't you weren't here when she was telling but, us the other day. Um, yeah, it just kind of hit me like, so what? Like, what am I supposed to look like? Like, is it not? You is it like <laughs> right? Is it not okay for me to wear my hair in cornrows? But I got it got so in my head that I just stopped wearing cornrows because I guess I wanted to make new friends that bad and I didn't realize that that was not a thing that I should that I should do like I shouldn't change my appearance for the, for to the be comments. to make friends yeah how about you Eli because you're in middle school now <laughs> um, do you know you're black yet <laughs> have you have you been told up. has that come up yet not really because you're in sports you're yeah. in sports too by I, the way yeah, yeah. yeah. In sports. So they, you can talk about the difference between the soccer team and the track team right yeah yeah i feel like on the soccer team there's a lot more white kids there's a lot white more white kids Hispanic. Hispanic. And Hispanic, yeah yeah and um the on the team. track team it's obviously pretty much only black kids. Like, obviously <laughs> See, this is why he didn't want to come. <laughs> like, he didn't want to show up for this conversation. <laughs> no, it, it's just like obviously it's the stereotype of actually no, it's it. of it's like it. black people are like they run. <laughs> I don't that know. Is how a I, I don't that know is. how to say it. Like you all, don't have to try to be PC my... on the show. In all my classes, it's it's like only um white white teachers, white um kids. Like in one of my in my reading class, it's like me and like two other people are black in that class. Again, in the gifted white. program, right. but, yeah. But and I I don't even want to get into the school system. I'm just gonna stop right <laughs> yeah. here because yeah, <laughs> wait, let, let's not get into the school system because this is not about the school system. But mm -hmm. what I I do want to talk about is. It's hair. Like, you know, you guys have been, oh, he put yeah. your name up. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> because hair has been also, you talked about the cornrows, but hair has been a big um, challenge. Like, you used to flat iron your hair a lot, yeah. Cassandra, in, in middle, uh, middle and school. school. Middle and high school. I mean, your hair had gotten to the point where it couldn't even curl anymore. You yeah. flat ironed it so much. It was. Going straight. Perm. It was yeah. practically firm <laughs> from fat ironing it so mm -hmm. much. Why did you feel the need and not only feel the need to fat iron it, but two is everybody thought your hair was fake because it was so long. Yeah. It was like all the way down to your butt. Mm -hmm. It was so long. So talk about your hair and how that made you feel being mixed. Okay. Um, well, yeah. So you can't really tell how long it is right now, but um, last summer, no, two summers ago, I cut it to about here because all the ends were practically dead from flat ironing it. Um, I had started flat ironing it in seventh grade, I believe. I think, I think six, it was seventh, seventh end grade. of sixth or beginning of seventh grade. Um, and I got a lot of compliments for it. So I was like, you know, I like this. It's easier to do in the morning. I can put it up in a ponytail if I want to and not have to worry about it frizzing too much later and stuff. So I started wearing it regularly um straight i'd have mom flat iron it on sundays go with it for the week wash it on saturday have it done again in time for school on monday um and it kind of just became a defining thing for me i'd have friends coming to braid my hair all the time i had people always wanting to run their fingers through it like it's like a doll's hair it's so nice oh my gosh um and i got to the point where like some of the black girls would come up to me and just be like hey 
is that your real hair? Or like, where did you buy your hair? And I'm just like, no, this is, this is my real hair. <laughs> and they kind of just be like, really? Can I touch it? Like they needed evidence. Um, that it was let me, attached let me to my feel head. your scalp. Right. Let me, like, no, like, let let me the, track. Let me say, like, where, no matter who it is, they will always want to touch your hair, black or white. Because I've had I've had black girls come up to me and be like, "That's your real hair," like, and come up to the root of my hair and tug at yeah. it just to make sure it was mine. So, yeah. Got you, little boy. When no one asked if my hair is real, they didn't like touching it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Because kind of hair is a big too. yeah, hair is a big thing, and yeah, you got a lot of it right now. Even though I trimmed it, I did cut it, but it's it's a lot. <laughs> um, hair has always been a big thing, and so I want to just ask, what are you mixed with? Because let's let's just know we're talking about mix, mm-hmm. and 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 I also want to talk about um, categorizing yourself. It's when you have a um a form to fill out okay so you want to talk about that okay so what do you mix with i think you can answer that just play the animaniacs the animaniacs song about the country (laughs) (laughs) come on you got some chinese there's chinese and lebanese there's indian there's black there's some european some german yeah german Um, yeah so yeah, so from my side of the family, it's <laughs> it's German, Indian, Black, uh, East Indian, not American, Native American Indian, East Indian from India, and from my husband's side of the family, it's Chinese, Lebanese, and also Black. Mm-hmm. So, but predominantly Chinese and Lebanese. So, it's they're a m- mismatch of all kinds of stuff going on because we're from. Trinidad. Originally, my husband and I are from Trinidad. So there's a lot of stuff going on over there. And so they are like, people don't know what they are. <laughs> They're like, what are you? And uh, do you get that question a lot? What yes, are you? Just yes. no, they'll walk no. up to you and be like, hey, do you have Indian in you? Or oh, that's you? That's me. Oh, yeah. no, I, just I think because of your complexion. No, I just straight up get the where are you from? I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm from Miami. And you're like, no, but where are you from? I'm where like, are you no, from, I'm really? From Miami. <laughs> where are you from, really? Oh, well, my parents are from Trinidad and Tobago. But where are they from? <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And you. What, like, what type of stuff do you have? Like, what type of heritage? Yeah. Like heritage. What are you mixed with? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mix with? Yeah. What do you mix yeah. with? You get that a lot. What do you mix with? <laughs> um, and. How about filling out forms? I fill out most of the forms around here. I well, used to. I used to. I'll, I'll take it back to uh, the school system. For College Board, when we have to fill out our AP um, like information forms for every AP that you take, they do one big assembly where you... Can you explain what AP is? AP is Advanced Placement um classes so basically you're taking college classes in high school (laughs) high tech mother says you look like her a little bit (laughs) so yeah you're taking um college level classes in high school and if you pass the the exam at the end of the year you can get college credit um (laughs) thank you jenny may (laughs) so yeah usually they'll have an assembly before they start the exams to fill out all the information and part of it is your ethnicity and usually they have um, Black, Pacific Islander, um, or like Alaskan, White Caucasian, um, Hispanic. But usually in the White Caucasian part, they also um, add Middle Eastern, which is very interesting because you wouldn't normally mix the two together. <laughs> so usually I end up putting um, Asian or wherever that whatever that is, Mm -hmm. Asian, Black, African-American, and white Caucasian. And some people look at me funny like, what do you mean white Caucasian? And I'm like, plus Middle Eastern, because my dad is part Lebanese. So, yeah, it's it's weird. Yeah, it's hard to to categorize, so a lot of times you just put other. So I'm trying to... That's my default. (laughs) Other, but just other. Other or one or more races. (laughs) <laughs> yes. one or more races uh, I'm trying to see okay let me see if this helps does that help 
All right, let's see. We're trying to see if we can get more of us in the county. There we go. <laughs> so, so um, I, 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 I think I've lost all segments at this point. Like we had, we had a plan coming into this, but we've kind of lost all the segments. And um, one of one of the questions I did want to ask because you guys are like a range of complexions, right? We're just all kinds of different. Has that ever been an issue um, for you when you're together or especially? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Maria. I hate those check off boxes too. <laughs> oh, you all look so gorgeous. Thank you, Maria. Oh, love the curry hair. Miss <laughs> Vanaska. So, what about, um, yeah, if, you, if you're together, is there any, has there any been like, questions? Um, I mean, I say more assumptions than questions. Um, whenever Brooke and I go out, uh, a lot of the time, um, we'll go out with my best friend, who is a lot closer to Brooke's complexion. So oftentimes, and hair texture. Yeah. <laughs> so oftentimes, people will assume that they're sisters and that I'm the third wheel. And <laughs> I mean, it's not that it's a problem necessarily, but it does bother me because. She's my sister. <laughs> you know? like, She's my I love sister. you. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just, it's the principle of the thing. The fact that because of their complexion, people think that they're They related, automatically yeah, assume that they're. And not me. <laughs> yeah. But, but usually when we're out together, they'll recognize that we're sisters. Not because of our complexion, but because of our look. And because you or all the, talk the same. Yeah, I was going to say, the way Do we really? speak. Really? Like once we speak. Once we start speaking to people, they'll kind of be like, oh, you guys are the sister. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you know what's funny? I don't know if I ever told you this, but when Cassandra was born, Cass, oh, when Cassandra was born, <laughs> I, I didn't look like I had a child. I was, I looked like I was probably 15 years old and I would carry this big baby because she was huge. Because <laughs> I was teeny tiny. I had, I my Stomach. I left the hospital with no stomach. Yes, you can hate me. I'm, but that's just my genetics. So I, I left the hospital with a little teeny tiny baby, and by four weeks she had doubled in size. She looked like big, and so I would walk around with this little baby, and I was like 96 pounds. <laughs> yeah, I was like 96 pounds with this big old baby. And she was even fairer than she is now. She's gotten a little darker since she was like <laughs> really pale, really pale. And everybody would assume that I was the nanny or I was taking care of her. Or I was like, I was not the mom. <laughs> so I got that all the time when I was like, I was taking care of you and I was not actually your mother. And everybody would always ask me if I was taking care of you. I'm like, yeah. no, this is and my you, baby. And you told me that. Um, when I was younger, when I used to throw tantrums and you had to corral me into the car, sometimes it would look like you were kidnapping me. Yeah, because I did not look like your you child. did not look like you were my child. And she would be throwing a tantrum in the store, and I'd have to drag like, me out, drag this throw me child into the me. minivan, and try to slide the door closed on me. It was, <laughs> Listen, it was a whole like a thing. Scene out it was of a movie. scene out of a movie. <laughs> she would. Yeah, no, I, actually, I actually oh God, not, that's a cute baby. Yes, I'm baby. Yeah, they would say that. That's a cute baby you're babysitting and you want to know who the parents are. No, I'll actually say something. Um, when, I, when I was younger, I used to think that I was <laughs> just checking it. You know, it's the topic. The topic is being mixed in America. My children's story of, of their experiences of being mixed in America. Tony. Yeah. Yeah. I used to I used to ask my mom and dad, hey, was I adopted? Because I would look at Cassie and I'd be like, well, she looks like a pretty fair mix <laughs> between my mom and dad. Where did I come from? Like I am significantly darker than her. Where like where do I fit in? And until they decided to show me my birth video and I was like, okay, so I do belong to this company. <laughs> you confirmation, yes, you came from me. And before anyone assumes, I did not try the big sibling no, card of no. telling her she was adopted. No, no, I, I, I was not yeah, all cruel. on my own. Yeah, I, I did that with my sister actually, because it, it's it's much <laughs> like, no, it's much like this. My sister was is uh, fairer than I am. She's a lighter complexion than I am. And so 
I just used to tell people she was adopted. That was my that was my ace in the hole. Well, <laughs> yeah. Parents are dark, though, so. yeah, so yeah. I just used to tell her she was tell every I didn't tell her she was adopted. I would tell everybody <laughs> else she was adopted. Um so what what were we talking about again? <laughs> what were we talking about again? I don't remember. Uh, I used to tell my dad that he is adopted. Let's take some comments. Yeah, I haven't really <laughs> taken any comments. Let's let's go through the the role of comments because I saw. Um Javier says, I'm sure the one rule is is mom, don't embarrass me tonight. Yes. Don't embarrass me. Yeah, um, and then, yeah, yep, sure. episode number. Yes, high tech mother. That's Sebastian's mother saying that. Um, so Sebastian says, "You oh, we're going so fast, I can't read them. Um, you were the room and they were, yeah, they were my womb mates, right? That was before. Um, Javier says, hola, how exciting to interview your girls. Proud mom, my girls and my boys, something. Yeah. Brooke and a half, yep, over there. Which she does not like, by the way. Wow, that's a beauty. Uh, she doesn't like that, yeah. It's a lot of beauty on the screen. Well, Thank you, Javier. Like yeah, so yeah, lots of love and blessings me. to my grandchildren. I hate those. Okay, I think we're we're up to speed now. We're caught up. Yay on the comments. Yes, so um, Jenny May says, I was told my sister, I, I always told my sister she was adopted because she had a baby book and she, you had a baby book and she didn't. Yeah, the baby book thing. Oh my goodness. Um, so I want to switch gears a little bit because we have had since this whole thing kind of uh, has been evolving in the news. Um, microphone. I got to pull the microphone up so we can all hear. Since everything has been evolving in the news about Black Lives Matter and and all the protests, I want to I want to get your opinion because Cassie, you're in college now, <laughs> and um, Brooke is in high school. Elijah says he's not really too. I, I know stuff about it, but I don't know anything like relevant. I don't really having an experience on it. Okay. So, but he's here, he's here just for moral yeah. support. Mm -hmm. So I want to, I want to go to Cassandra first. Like what has really, um, actually another question came into my mind before that one. And I want to talk about, <laughs> I want to talk about appropriation of culture because I know that's a thing, Brooke, for Brooke, sure. misappropriation of black culture. It's, I'm gonna let you talk really about that I first. I wrote part. a research paper on it. Okay. Yes, that's why I'm coming to you first because you wrote a so, research paper. Okay, on what it. exactly on like you want me to define what it is? Define or, what it is and what your experience with it, like how you see it playing out and what you like okay. and don't like about it. So cultural appropriation is basically taking taking a cultural aspect of another culture and using it and like publicizing it in the media and calling it your own so um a lot of people with like box braids and cornrows um i believe it was like kim kardashian or kylie jenner they would wear um like box braids and cornrows and they called it something completely different and people were upset about that because it's not what they call it it's cornrows and box braids which is a part of the black culture and community. Um, so, something like that, yeah. But that's, that's the basic premise of it. And um, I appreciate when people try to, when they use cultural appreciation, which is when they they take that cultural aspect and they they use it but i mean they obviously identify it and give it credit where credit's due and they don't step out of the like boundary location i don't i don't think so. the intention of the cultural aspect so they don't try to apply it to something else or they appreciate it they yeah. they have fun with it yeah. they they give credit where credit is due yeah. uh and they're not using they're not, they're not misusing, misusing yeah. it and, and, yeah. and saying, oh, this is mine. Oh, look how great I look doing this now mm -hmm. because I'm doing you it. You know, they started it in this way, but it can also be done this way. Yeah. So, okay. What, have you had any experience with that? Um, 
I mean, aside from people like, I don't even know if that counts as appropriation, but people misusing the N-word <laughs> um, around me, especially. Mm -hmm. um, I can't say that I've had... Has that been in college or in, in high school? Oh, everywhere. Everywhere? Yeah, I've had it both. Especially at parties and stuff, um, when there's a song with the N-word, white people love to use it as an excuse to use the N-word, and sometimes they'll look dead at me, and I'm like, <laughs> but why? But why? Do you look no, at me? So Does it offend you? Um, when they look at me, yes. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I mean, like, I acknowledge that it's going to be done regardless of my presence because they just genuinely don't understand or don't care to understand why black people ask other cultures not, not to, to use the n-word um but i mean the fact that they just do it upsets me i just i mean it's kind of one of those things that you get desensitized to after being around it for so long mm -hmm. that from middle it's school only even. 22. <laughs> but even from middle school people do it like, <laughs> but i mean are you tired are you desensitized to it kind of yeah mm -hmm. like i i used to have a lot of you don't care anymore <laughs> it, it said a lot in school yeah it said a lot my everybody yeah. And that bothers you? It, it doesn't bother me. Do okay. any people in your classes say it? Or is it black kid? <laughs> well, the black kid. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I still don't understand it when you talk to me. This is like. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand the pat. Like, why, why does anybody use it at all? Well, that why some people are allowed to use it and some people aren't. But, like, they, they say in school like um like if a white person says it it's like they were given the n-word pass by a black person it's just like, yeah. they were given permission what, why? by somebody else one how do we know that that's true and two like why are you saying it it's not, why, why does yeah. that person's permission um make it okay right yeah. okay all right, Derwin says, Alicia Curry and the family in the house. Beautiful to see you all. Thanks, Derwin. Um, Maria says, hate that word. I'm offended just hearing it from anyone because it's disrespectful. By the way, fix the sound. I'm trying. We have <laughs> we have the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. It can only go so far. You know, I have the I have the cord. Yeah. I know because I had to move here so we can fit because I couldn't be at my on my desk. All right. Mm -hmm. So we're we're making do with what we got. And um and I think the sound is turned all the way up. I think so. Uh so now I was going to ask Cassandra, since mm -hmm. all this came up with um yep, we have the microphone on with Black Lives Matter. Okay, I'm just talking more into it, Maria. Um, <laughs> everything came up with, with <laughs> Black Lives Matter and the protests. We've had some discussions in the house and we've had some exchanges, some differences of opinion. Mm -hmm. And um, how has, has the protests, how has, let me start with George Floyd, how has that impacted you? Hmm. That's kind of a loaded question. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously the video of his death is very, very disturbing. Upsetting. Very disturbing. Um, but I mean, like some people have been saying on social media, this isn't a new thing. It's just being caught on camera now. So it's kind of um, a give and take, pro and con kind of situation where it's like, okay, people are taking notice of it. Some people are also acting like this is new. Um, and then, of course, you have the extremists who think that this is staged, that this doesn't need to be happening, that um, segregation ended with the civil rights movement. Um, and Which is really why I'm doing these shows, because uh, while a lot of people are thinking, well, this doesn't really happen, you know, this did 
black people aren't really targeted by any anyone. It's only because certain things are being shown on TV now. Um, yeah, uh, High Tech Mother says, how do you feel about uh, the Black Lives Matter movement? Racism is a global problem. We just hide it better now, which makes me angry. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, <laughs> in my own personal experience, <laughs> like I have been profiled before um, while like shopping in stores with friends. And it won't even be like luxury stores, although I have been kicked out of a couple of them when I've gone with friends. They would kind of just look at us the second we walk in the door, have someone follow us, and then eventually just, um, excuse me, if you're not going to buy anything, could you please leave? And so... You know, we've had that kind of like we know that you can't afford anything in here, so go away. So is that racist or classist? Um, considering that there are people like my age dressed like me with different skin tones that are allowed to walk around in there, I would say it's racist. Um, Just asking the question. Yeah, and I've also had instances where I'd be at like Walmart or Target with some of my friends and security would be following us around the store i mean it would be like kind of late like during slower um hours where there aren't as many people coming through and we'd just be like looking through the clothes and then we go over to the toy section because we like to joke about like the nerf guns and stuff um sometimes we'd go over to like the music and the video games and especially over in electronics we would definitely have um, like people. one or two of the security people kind of just like walking the aisle next to us, glancing over, kind of passing the aisle every now and then. And sometimes they'd even follow us until we get to check out, check out and then leave the store. Wow. Uh, let me look at some of the comments that are popping up because I see them popping up. Um, Jenny May says, deep conversation. I was reading something where white young people said it was OK because it, it's in the song talking about the n-word um but they're not actually calling someone that word what do you think about that um, yeah. all right so um there's the, there's these youtubers and um they're doing like a would you rather thing and um it was like uh you, you have to like when a song pops up you have to s sing that song or um like dance to it and um, what one of the white guys wanted to just sing the song, and um, like they're, they're just joking around about it. And um, one of the black guys was like, "The song with the N word comes up," and they're like, "A hundred percent." Then it was like, "Shoot!" And then he went over to the to yeah, the dance. Set, yeah, because yeah. like, they just wouldn't say the word. Yeah, because they don't. They so don't how do you feel the about them? Sing, singing the word because the lyrics, like you said, like you said before, that it's just an excuse. What do you feel about them saying it just because it's in the song? Oh, I gotta say it because it's part of the song. That, that's just an excuse for wanting to sing. It. Yeah. Sing. Okay. Um, and Brooke, what do you feel about that? Um, I don't think that that's in that's a proper excuse to say it just because I mean that's it's wrong yeah <laughs> Listen, if it's censored on the radio why are you, you saying say it. you don't need to be saying it all right so how do you feel about what's happening with uh the protests and everything bro um okay so the whole, as Cassie said, the whole video was very upsetting to watch. And honestly, I think that the protests are overdue. I feel like people have been feeling this way for a long time. And this is like the final push. Yeah, to get everyone involved. Like everybody saw the video. So everybody is now aware that this kind of thing is happening. So now people can shed light on other on just things that the police have done and now but it's not just a police issue though because no it's, it's not racism. just a police issue it's racism yeah yeah uh maria said that happened to me too cassie <laughs> when i was young but i didn't view it as being targeted who knows <laughs> i mean it's happened repeatedly sometimes in the same place oh wow 
Oh, um, no. Thank you, Maria. She said you all are so well spoken. Thank you. Uh, and I feel like it's like for, racism hasn't really like spiked up again. It's just that it's being shown more. Yeah, yeah so it's being fought. People, people are seeing it more. Uh, Stacy says recently I watched the movie, uh, The Hate You Give, and I and I was uh, and I cried so hard to see and hear the talk that young black and brown children are given. Alicia, you no. Have you, have you had that talk with your children? If yes, how did they react? We've never really had the talk like yeah. that, but um, we've just really raised them to be respectful of everyone, their elders, and really treat others with respect. And if they're pulled over by an officer, both of these are, these girls are driving, um, you know, to be respectful. And, you know, profiling happens. Mm -hmm. We can't be ignorant to it. Mm -hmm. um, and be as respectful as you can. Mm -hmm. Follow instructions, follow directions. And you don't have a word for brown, Asian, European. So why have the N word in music or anything? Um, it yeah, it it just shouldn't be done anymore. It should be one of those banned words. Listen, I don't condone the N word for anyone to say, just because it has such a cultural yeah presence. Because in the it's, black it's community. it is a painful reminder of and. I'm aware of why the black community still uses that word. But even me, I, I personally don't say it because I, I don't feel it. comfortable mm -hmm. saying it. So I'd rather it not be in music at all. But I mean, that's just how people yeah. well, get let's, their Let's start a protest too. for that. Well, I was going to bring that up <laughs> because um, I've read up on why people use it. And I have friends who use it. Um, and I don't tell them to like censor it around me or anything because I don't feel that it's as bad as like a curse word per se um, when it's used with the right intention. Um, so a lot of the intention with people using it now, with black people using it now is to sort of reclaim it mm -hmm. um, because of the power that it's had over the years as a slur and as a derogatory term and as a sort of um, yeah, a classifier, yeah. right? Of disgust and everything. Um, black people have been trying to turn it positive um, within their own community. To kind but of in rap songs, it's not positive. It. It's been been not positive in rap songs. I'm sorry. Well, when they say it like my, okay, it's like, it's, like, it's, like, it's like a brotherhood yeah, thing, yeah. but it's sometimes it's not. Kind of, yeah, but it's, yeah, some, it's not used yeah. like that sometimes. All right, I have a few minutes to wrap. I just want to ask one last question, and then we'll wrap up. Um, what does Black Lives Matter mean to you? Um, I mean, it doesn't mean that all lives matter, like some, or that all lives don't matter, like some people have been trying to argue. It's just that we need to highlight what has been happening to the Black community for so long, how much we've been disenfranchised, how much um, we've been shortcut in different things, even, you know, like with black women sometimes not receiving proper medical attention, mm -hmm. um, all kinds of different avenues like that. And it's really just to draw attention to the problems and just how deep they run, how systemic racism actually is, and how we really need a lot of people to pay attention to it, to educate themselves on it, and to help us turn the tide and change the narrative for good this time. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> <laughs> what is Black Lives Matter? Don't even you? ask me. She said it all. No, I, <laughs> I, it's like um, what Kat, what Kat just said. Like um, all lives do matter, and uh, I feel like we just need to emphasize Black Lives more because it's like there's like uh, two houses, like one's on fire. Which one? Like um, like one's white, one's black. Um, the fire department's gonna go put out the house that's on fire. Yeah, the fire department's Not gonna go to every house. single house. Yeah, like yeah, every to house make sure they're okay. The Wash first. first. Like the most yeah. needed help that it. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so sweet. Uh, Stacy says, unfortunately, I was raised in a very racist home, and one of my parents still uses the N word. 
I'm so sorry for the lack of empathy that people that like that, uh, that my family have. I hope and pray that Black Lives Matter will allow us to each, to see each other yeah. as humans. I, you know, I need my glasses. <laughs> exactly. Um, Exactly, the word has to go. Even black to black needs to end the use. I think so. Even if you use trying to reclaim it as something positive, it it still can be misunderstood. I agree with all of you that we should focus on black lives right now, um, under the circumstances. So the thing is, when we say black, we mean black, brown. You know, all minorities fall yeah, under that. Um, you can tell someone whose child died, all children matter, not the right time and moment to say. Exactly, Sebastian. Um, so um, Jenny Mae says, I'm just so sorry that you all have to experience this, but your generation is giving me so much hope in seeing how your generation is the force behind so many of these protests and forcing the issue. Yes, Jenny. Um, and this is why I wanted to have a college student, a high school student, a middle school student on the show. Well, we didn't know the middle school was actually going to show up, but he did. Uh, <laughs> I didn't promote you coming. You were just a bonus, baby. Um, <laughs> that's why you kind of half on the screen because we, we, we set it up without you. But but to, to hear and you produce all the guests, my I produced all the guests myself. Yes, mm -hmm. I I I made them just for this moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I created them just well, for this moment. I have served my purpose. You have served your purpose. Um, so I wanted to get their opinions because, like Jenny said, they are the future and they are uh, experiencing this right now in this moment and what they believe and what they're seeing and what they're they're willing to do for change these two will be voting they're voters now she'll be turning 18 soon and you'll be influencer <laughs> <laughs> and they'll be voting so you know this is the next generation that we have to raise with conscious awareness raise with um the understanding of how they can make a change and they can make a systemic change not just a superficial change but they can continue the work and really um, make a change, but awesome that he did. Yeah, what that, a great representation of strength in your family. Thank you very much, Stacy. May you all stay blessed. That's Stacy. That's who I was telling you about. It was my guest last night. That's Miss Stacy. Um, super cool. <laughs> she. I was telling her about you, Stacy. She said you're super cool. So super woman. Yes, the pageant, the pageant lady. There you go. See, he remembers. I was talking about you. So um, that's it for the show tonight. Uh, you guys have anything else you wanted to say? Tell everybody to go vote, not just for the general election, but your primaries, your state, local offices, every level of government counts. There you go. Also, <clears throat> to make sure you know where you're donating, when, if and when you donate, make sure you know where your donations go to. Research where those donations are going to. Absolutely, because you might, something looks pretty in the front and you say, yes, I like that cause. But then when you start looking at where the money is flowing, it's not actually going to where you think it's going. That's so, yes, yeah, so make sure you know where it's going. Um, but, uh, yes, August 18th in Florida for the primaries. Anything, any last words you want to say? I'm trying to shut down the show. <laughs> no? Uh, thank you. We appreciate you showing up, putting down your video games and actually coming. To the show and lending your uh, and there he goes <laughs> he's like an old man he just walked out of here he's like he gave me a little salute he's like adios yeah, he's like, oh, back? oh he's come back oh, <laughs> he'll stay for the wrap up this is it i'm wrapping up but uh, okay so i just want to say thank you all for joining thank you all for, for participating and watching and all the great comments we really appreciate it and yes these are the seed my seeds that i have sown to go out into the world um so thank you so much for joining us and uh, i want to just say to live your life with audacious confidence step into what's possible for you and your future and um, here on Tomaniac TV, we say, you dream big and we make it happen. Good night, everybody. Hi, Alicia Curry here. If you enjoyed that episode of the Audacious Confidence Show, check out more on this channel. And don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your friends, 
And if you hit that notification button, you won't miss a single episode.